What is up, guys? Burning Heavy here. Bit of a serious video here. I know it's crazy coming from here. This guy, this fat guy, making a serious video. Today, I want to talk about what makes one game sell well. You know, 23.3 million copies, and another not so well, 1.2 million copies. Both are considered quality games. One considered one of the best of all time. The other considered above average. Obviously, you know, both have high budget for advertising and stuff. One sells amazing, one not so much. Why? If you couldn't tell already, the game I'm referring to is Skyrim, the Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning, the game in the background. Skyrim, the one with the 23.3 million copies. What does Skyrim do differently that would translate to better sales? Maybe a bit more freedom in the gameplay, maybe. Tighter combat. Even though I think Amalur's combat's rather good, definitely different. Better story. Amalur's has a decent story, and a halfway decent back lore, maybe not as fleshed out, but still a pretty good back lore, or whatever the hell you want to call it. Now, with the two games released too close together, I don't think so. That's something that gets brought up a lot. I don't think so. November 2011 to mid-2012? Eh, no. Should we really even be comparing the two? I think it's a valid comparison. You know, because they're two very related games. They're both RPGs. Both open world, etc., etc., etc. But, you know, let's see what else was coming out at the time. Guild Wars 2 would be launching shortly after Amalur. While well, Guild Wars 2 is an MMORPG, and Amalur is a single player game, they both have similar fan bases. Again, I don't think one would choose one over the other because it was staggered a bit. Dragon's Dom Dogma was released a little bit before Amalur, and is considered a cult classic. Two million sales. Ooh, that's a number Capcom's happy with. But I don't think it would be keeping players away from buying Amalur. WoW wouldn't be launching Mists of Pandaria for a few more months, so it's not really something people would be thinking about. Amalur launched at a good time. It wasn't trying to compete with the summer blockbusters. Not summer blockbusters, the Christmas blockbusters. If it was, that'd be a different story. Okay, there's too many big games releasing in that window. It would obviously hurt sales. So what can we look at for the reasons Amalur did poorly? Advertising is frequently brought up as a reason a game fails, you know, a lack thereof. I know I'm big in the Wildstar community. All we do is bitch about the lack of advertising, but this isn't the case with Kingdoms of Amalur. It was an ad campaign. I remember a few commercials. They had streamers all over the place on launch day doing streams, etc., etc. Um, you could argue this was the company's first uh, game, you know. Maybe, but they aren't coming from the same place as an indie dev releasing their first game. You know, because EA is vouching for them by publishing the game, vouching that, hey, this meets EA quality standards. Whether or not you believe in the EA quality standards, a lot of people do say, oh, it's EA, it can't be that shitty. Okay, uh, there was hype around it. You know, Kurt Schilling found 38 games. You know, or at least he was involved in the founding or whatever, so people were like, hey, what's Kurt Schilling doing? So, there was stuff going on. There was a bit of a controversy. Kingdoms of Amalur had day one DLC, which people don't like. You know, there was the online pass, there was the, hey, come buy the shit early so you can get shepherd armor. A lot of people were mad about that. But, honestly, the number of people willing to boycott a game over things like that isn't that high. Definitely not high enough to make the difference between 1.2 million and 23.3 million. So what's the difference? I think the difference simply is, Kingdoms of Amalur is above average RPG. It's not a blockbuster like a Skyrim. It's not a Fallout. It's not a Call of Duty. So it should have been happy with 1.2 million copies sold. That's a good number of copies. 60 bucks a pop? That's well over 60 million dollars. You know, a normal game, that's good. Okay? They weren't. They spent so much money developing it, assuming they were going to get the 10, 15, 20 million mark. But they didn't. Kings of Amalur is known as a failure because it forced 38 games to close their doors and file for bankruptcy. But what was the failure? Critically, it's considered above average game. The game has fans. My sister's one of them. I'm one of them. No, the failure was definitely expecting too much. While other developers are throwing parties when their game sells a million copies, 38 is having to go bankrupt. Problem? Too big of a budget, like I said before. 
expecting Skyro numbers, they should have been expecting Transistor numbers. Because of this, we will likely never get Amalur 2, which was in pre-production when 38 games collapsed. Come on, you can't be making the sequel before you even know how the original does. Come on. The AAA game industry is afraid to make new IPs, to take risks. I'll discuss this in a future video in more detail. It's why instead of a nifty pirate game called Black Flag, we get forced Assassin's Creed references. Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag, would have been so much better if it had thrown aside the Assassin's Creed name and just been Black Flag. Instead of a potentially cool cop game called Harline, devs are forced to make it feel battlefieldy because Battlefield has to be in front of it. And we all know how that turned out. Hopefully games will start being smarter with their budgets in the future. That'll never happen. <coughs> Destiny. <coughs> and hopefully this video made you think. Tell me what you think about what I said in the comments below. Do you think game studios have too high of expectations? Do you think people should be happy with 1.2 million copies sold? Something that would be considered platinum in the music industry. But is instead making a game be at a loss. Let me know what you think in the comments. Leave a like. Subscribe to get more quality ass content like this. Anyways, this has been Burning Heavy, and as always, have a wonderful day. Thank <laughs> you.